good and it contrasts well with red beans and rice. Very good. So, that's, uh, I, I hedge my meal.
and gentlemen, it's great to be back at the Birdsmere, all right. I have no idea how many times we played here, but I love it. It's a cool place. Thank you for filling it up every time we come. It's all right. Superlatives. I have seen Sweetheart of the Rodeo t-shirts in the crowd, Birds t-shirts, and uh, we did a glorious tour with Roger McGuinn and Chris Hillman celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Sweetheart of the Rodeo record. They're our brothers and they, uh, we look up to them and love them so much and so one of the songs that we did on that Sweetheart tour every single night and I couldn't wait for it to come around was an old soul song from Memphis written by a fellow named William Bell and it's called You Don't Miss Your Water Till the Well Runs Until Your Well Runs Dry. Can we do it for you? For the birthday. Yours, 
from Denver, Colorado. How about a hand for cousin Kenny Vaughn on the good side?
longer than most marriages last in Nashville. <laughs> yeah. So we just started following our hearts, playing music where we thought we belonged and mattered. One of the places that first took us in when nobody else would book us was the Native Americans on Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. <laughs> We fell in love with those people. Connie and I got married up there. I got adopted into the tribe, so I love them. Cousin Kenny's full-blooded Apache. Yeah. So we were out touring in that part of the world, had a day off in Billings. I love American history, you know. And he said, take me out to the scene of a great crime. I want to go to see where George Custer got what he had coming to him. <laughs> if anybody from the Custer's family is here, I apologize. <laughs> so I went out to see the Little Bighorn Battlefield. He got me there almost too late. The sun was starting to go down, everybody was leaving. And every stop along the way, the words started coming. I had a match book and I started writing, trying to read it. So we did a record called Badlands. <laughs> Ballads of the Lakota. Here's a song from Badlands. Well, I went to Little Bighorn. Not a single word was said. Except one old lonely ghost that said the general's still dead, the general's still dead. I asked him if any Indians ever came to call. He said the last one that he'd seen rode off the big chief call, rode off the big chief call. Forget you again. 
waiting on my hand to hatch. Get it, girl.
I'm wiped out. How about one more hammer, Chris Scruggs? And make welcome handsome Harry. Thank you so much. I'm gonna to try to regain a little bit of my dignity on this next one. If I can, this is written by Woody Guthrie, and I'm gonna sing a high note on the ballad of Brave Boy Flow. Are you ready?
Thank you so much. Well, um, uh, this next song is written by Bob Dylan and Roger McGuinn. And we were, as Maury said, we did a tour with them a couple years ago and heard a lot of great stories. This song started out as Peter Fonda wanting a uh, song for his movie Easy Rider. So he wanted Bob Dylan to write it, and he took it. He went to Woodstock and showed him the movie, and Bob wrote on a piece of paper. The river runs down to the sea, river. And that's McGuinn, he'll tell you, he'll know what to do with it. <laughs> so he took the piece of paper back to California, and this is, this is the song they came up with. That river goes down to the sea. Wherever that river goes, that's where I want to be. Flow, river flow. Let your waters wash down and take me from this road to some other town. Was to be free. That's just the way it turned out to be. Flow, river flow. Let your waters wash down and take me from this road to some other town. Get 
get out, get out, get out, get out on your knees and pray. Get out, get out, get out.
you enjoy Handsome Harry tonight? We would like to applaud the Birch here on their new sound system and their new video wall. How about that? sound out there in the house tonight. Pitt County, Cody P. All the staff here at the Birch Fair, give them a nice hand. Jim, thank you for coming to this. And how about a hand for Cousin Kenny, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks to Rick. Hey, I give Marty a hand, that's right. <laughs> Rick Fowler for putting us on his beautiful radio show one more time. Every time we come up here, Rick always offers us an interview. Thank you, Rick. And Elaine and all our friends that come here, some of our original fans from before the Hillbilly Rock days. All the girls are here. Y'all stand up, ladies. Give them a Come on, stand up. So, Butch Hobsons and I could not resist that train. We loved it. <laughs> trains are magical to me, they're mystical. So Butch and I went down there, and you remember when trains had cabooses? Yeah. This train had a caboose, and a fellow named Mr. Bill Davis was the caboose man. So Bill Davis gave me and Butch Hodgins, after he got to know us, he gave us Guff Mobile in Ohio stationery, Guff Mobile in Ohio pencils, Guff Mobile in Ohio t-shirt, and Guff Mobile in Ohio flares. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so y'all heard about the big fire, did you? <laughs> so one day, the train had stopped. And Butch was off doing something else. And I went down there, and there was this, this eccentric looking character standing by the train smoking a cigarette. He captivated my imagination. He had crazy looking hair. He wore a scarf. <laughs> <laughs> he wore clothes that came from another time. But there was something about him. He told me big stories about traveling on that train to beautiful, faraway, and exotic lands like Alabama and Arkansas. <laughs> but he got me. And the train hooked back up and it started to go. And then a fella jumped back up and then he thumped that cigarette and he looked at me like this. I said, What are you? He said, boy, I'm a hobo. And the lights came on. I said, got it. I went home and told my mom. I said, mom, I know what I want to do with my life. I'm going to be a hobo. Crazy hair, scarf, clothes from another time. Best band in the world. I've been to Alabama and Arkansas tonight. I've been to Washington. Bye-bye. 
Bob Lee. The son of the of the American Dream. And it all started in my hometown. From a record called The Pilgrim, with a song called Hobo's Prayer. Well, under bridges, beneath trestles, in the boxcars of dead trees, living to beat the cold, the poor and driving rain. A silent society moves out in the night. Ragged rebels, homeless hobos, are those like me who've lost the light. St. Peter is a prophet of all the hobo world, an expert on everything, caviar to girls. I met him west of Memphis on the 8th of July, and he handed me a can of beans and a rusty knife. And he said, everything out here ain't what it seems. And when I'm down to nothing, I just go ahead and dream. Face the fact that I'm a circle in a world full of squares, trading sorrows for tomorrows. That's the hobo's prayer. Trading sorrows for tomorrows, and that's the hobo's prayer. 